Hey, Composite Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about the Fletcher Munson Equal Loudness Contour Curves, or, you know, whatever you want to call it, Equal Loudness Curves, and they, they look like this. We're going to talk about how this graph works, how to interpret it, but first let's start off with why it matters. So, Equal Loudness Contours determine how loud each frequencies need to be so that we can... Uh, so that they sound even. So for example, if we look here on this graph, and we're going to talk about more about this, but you see that these, the higher up these are, so we have these curves and loudness and uh, labeled in fonts. I believe that's how you say it, fonts. And what you see is these, this is the level. So every single point on one of these lines is the level that the corresponding frequency down here at the bottom needs to be turned up or turned down to sound like it is to be perceived as the same volume level. So you see here that we have to turn this up. And as we get higher, you see that things uh, like the 90 decibels is quite a bit more linear. If we were to come down here, look at this. If we listen at 10 uh, fawns, we're going to have to turn up low frequencies a ton to hear them at the same level that we would hear 1K to 2K. So that's quite substantial. And in this range, the three, the three and a half to four kilohertz range, we actually have to turn that one down to make it sound equal level. So if you're listening to music and you're listening to it at like 60 decibels, you're going to get a, your ears will put a different frequency response basically on it than you would at 90 or 80. And that's also one reason why uh, now these, these, the particular curves I up I have up here, I believe, are the ones from the original experiment. There are new ones, but and they're they're very similar. They are the ones just a little more accurate. I guess they were a little more particular about it. I don't know the whole particulars, but the main takeaway is when you're listening to music softer, your mids are gonna stick out more. And when you listen to music louder, your it'll sound more even across the spectrum. And so the question comes like, when do you want to mix what where? When do you want to mix, you know, with your volume loud versus soft? What are the implications of it? And all these other things. So we're going to approach some of these questions. Now, to interpret this graph, it's not super complicated. Um, and we've already learned a little bit about it. But basically, the fawn is the it's measured at the threshold of audibility. And it, it's put right here. I pretty much just said it. But basically, it's the softest thing you can hear. You can have negative fawns. Those are inaudible sounds. And they do have those. They actually have rooms. They're called anechoic chambers that are actually softer. They're measured in negative decibels because they're softer than we can hear. So we have this thing called fawns. And so that's that's what the unit of the fawns is, a loudness measurement. And then we have over here, we have dBSPL. Now, this is a... So when we hear something, what we're picking up on is atmospheric pressure movement. You should be familiar with this from the videos previously in the series. So what that means is what this is measuring is that movement. So and it's a logarithm. This is a logarithmic scale. So um, to give you an idea of how logarithmic scales work, it's uh, it's sort of got so a linear scale. If you follow the pattern of my mouse, we would go up to the other corner in a going right through the other corner in a straight fashion. In fact, if I break open FL and just open up like, I don't know, we'll open up Maximus here. And I'm, I just need some sort of a graph so I can show you. So this right here, this straight line, that is linear. This is more logarithmic. And the reason, the way this works is you can see a difference from here to here is quite a substantial difference, but a small, but if we were to add the same value, so if we started at like one and then we doubled it to two, which is like, let's just say, let me zoom this up. So let's say we're starting right here and we go, we double our distance, go boom. That's actually not that much of an increase. It's very, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's just not that much of an increase. The reason why we use a logarithmic scale is because the range we have for hearing is enormous. It's huge. You can hear, like, if I were to just, I don't know if you can hear that. That's super soft compared to like, I don't know, a stick of dynamite going off. You can hear this huge range of hearing. I think it's like uh, it's in the range of like a trillion times. Like one is literally a trillion times louder. So if we were to go around saying like, hey, turn that up like 1,572,000 times, that's just not the way we're going to be responding to things. And this te that's technically a different if we're talking in level, it's a different decibel readout. But basically, sound pressure level, we use a logarithmic scale so that we have a meaningful way of, of giving volume out. And we have here, so if, so if we added 90 decibels to an additional 90 decibels, we're adding it logarithmically. And so that would actually produce... 93 decibels. So hopefully that makes some sense. So they're comparing it to that to that scale right here. 
And so when you say turn stuff up by decibels, it's quite, it gets quite interesting. But that's all you really need to understand for that. And then the phones, of course. Now each one of these, each one of these lines has a particular has a particular line. And what this line represents is how loud each one of these. So every single dot on this line is the corresponding amount you have to turn a particular frequency up or down to hear it. So if, if you notice here on the 40 phones lines, we have to actually turn some stuff down because our ears are more sensitive to it. And then if we look down here, we can see the frequencies mapped out. So we see that like, oh, 20 hertz, we have to turn that up quite a bit to hear it. Now, let's talk about the, the experiment itself. Basically, all you have to do, you, you too could conduct an experiment sort of like this. You pick a reference level. So you, you say you're going to play tones back at a particular volume level, and you're going to play all the tones back at that particular volume level every time. You set up a reference tone. That way, any changes you have to make are going to be relative to that reference tone, so that it's a change that the ear is putting on there, not that actually exists in reality. Now, you got to have good speakers and stuff to do this, but of course, they worked for, uh, Fletcher and Munson worked for, I believe it was like AT&T, and so... You know, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was AT and T, and they were doing this research for um, they were re they were doing this research to help along with telephone technology and stuff like that. So we have this going on, and so basically what you do is you put a headphone on, and you play, and they used one K as a reference tone, so one kilohertz, and then they they played that back, and then they would play like 500 hertz, right? And then they'd ask the person, so they'd play it back at the exact same level. Like the, so if you picked a preset volume and that's the volume you're playing stuff back at, and you could use like electric on a, a DB, a voltage readout or a, a level readout or whatever you want. Uh, so DBM, DBV, whatever. And then you ask the person, Hey, is this louder or softer? And they tell you it's louder or softer. And then you ask them if you needed to turn it up or down, or I suppose you'd get that information from your first question and you'd move it. And so you'd say, Hey, I had to turn up. 500 hertz by this much to make it sound the same volume as 1000 hertz and so we say oh so our ears are less sensitive to 500 hertz at that level but you notice we have to turn it up here as soon as we increase now that's at the threshold of hearing that's what this um that's what this line represents but at the next level we don't have to turn it up anymore and you see that we see this curve starts to get pushed and look at even on by the time we reach 30 phones we are i hope i'm saying that right it might be phones I'm pretty sure it's Fonz. I don't even know. But as you see, we're already turning it down once we reach 30. And then we get to 40. Now we're turning it down by quite a bit. So as we turn our volume up, the need to turn the bass. So we see here, if we go to 20 hertz, look at this. On the 10 line, so if we look at this 10 line, we have to turn it up a friggin' ton. It's pretty much that way all the way across, but it becomes less and less extreme as we go up. So as we turn our volume up, our ears produce a more even frequency response and if now there are updated curves like I said earlier on how this works so another thing we should take note of and you should be aware of from the previous videos in this series is that the ear has a natural resonance in the ear canal and that is very well shown here it's about three and a half kilohertz somewhere around there and you can see it here so we actually we naturally hear those frequencies so we can dip those now, there are a number of things that this thing doesn't tell you. For example, this does not tell you transient response of the ear. So if we play really short sounds, these curves would actually look different. And so, yeah, there's just some things that they don't take into account here. I'm thinking like we're thinking like straight tones rather than more complex signals and things. So that's something you should be aware of. So people sometimes make a lot of extrapolated judgment from these curves but if you're dealing with particular types of sounds they don't necessarily play by these rules like drum sounds like hi-hat sounds there's a point where if a sound is so fast that your eardrum can't really move fast enough because it's a mechanical motion so the the three ossicles and all that mechanical stuff it can't react fast enough for that so what ends up happening is you get a timbre change instead of a volume change and so this is this is taken into account in some ways here but it's totally dependent on the material you you put people through when you do this so just just letting you know of some additional things that a lot of people tend to not point out the big takes takeaways are when you're listening at like 65 db spl you're going to get a different experience when you're listening at 90. Now the question comes, what what should I mix at? Now this is a good this goes on a case by case basis. If you're mixing, you know, like 
classical music, there's probably a huge dynamic range. See, if you're mixing pop, it's going to be pretty much slammed against the max, like, 0 dB full scale. So it's going to be, like, just blasting the whole time. And that's fine, but then you got to keep in mind how that's going to sound. So if someone turns it down and you don't have a very big range, no contrast, you're going to affect that. So it's pretty much going to represent this curve perfectly. That's another thing that people don't often mention is if you have a dynamic range in your track, you aren't necessarily always going to be at 90 decibels. So you can create contrast to make things sound really loud, much louder than a track that's always blasting at 90 dB. You could create a moment that sounds far louder than that just because it's got room to breathe. And there's like a fine balance there. But basically, if we're assuming that you're running pretty hot levels most of the time, you want to ask yourself, when I'm mixing, am I mixing for like an audience that's going to listen to it soft or an audience that's going to listen to it loud and then mix for that and make it sound good like that? Like when I'm mixing at people's EDM mixes, I know that I need to turn it up because that's what they had in their mind when they were making it. If I listen to their mix soft, uh, I'm going to run into weird issues. Now, there's another thing, though, if you, if you run into some audio files that are really into this stuff they'll tell you all sorts of neat tricks you can do. Like a couple, I was like, oh, that's a really good idea. For example, if you turn down your mix after mixing it high, you should hear the mids pop out because ideally the bass and the high frequencies will go away unless you mixed it to sound good at a lower level. But then that means when you turn your mix up, you're going to have increased... Uh, so you're gonna so basically if you're gonna mix it 65 decibels you're going to naturally compensate assuming that your ears are the only problem here you don't have any problems with your room or headphones or monitors all that stuff squared away when you compensate for it you're gonna be turning up your as you can see here by our curves the the lows and the highs quite a bit and there's lots of systems um, sound systems that take this into account uh, they have knobs and buttons named various types of loudness that you can use and it will input a curve that's the opposite of this. So it'll boost your highs and your lows. That way it'll sound that way. Or it'll cut your mids. And by comparison, it'll be softer. And then you can turn the whole thing up. But uh, basically, if you compensate that for at a lower volume level, when you turn it up, you're going to have either too much well, too much bass and too much high end. Now, something that's not showing here is how steep these actually get. These, uh, th This particular illustration that I have here that these you actually have to turn the high end quite a ways up now this is assuming that you have like great hearing like they picked people that have you know really good hearing or, or average hearing I'd suppose you could say but I can't hear 20 hertz and I can't hear 20 kilohertz I can hear up to like 18 somewhere around there and so you just got to be careful about about that so that's some that's equal loudness curves just something you should be generally aware of that's how they work if you have any questions let me know um subscribe support me on patreon and have a blessed day